Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, love, laugh, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Fett on UBNRadio.com. And welcome. My name is Dr. Marissa, also known as the kinder, gentler Dr. Laura. And you are listening to this week's episode of Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. So I would like to introduce you to someone who works with me in this field called Balanced Life Coaching or Life Coaching on talking about our dis-ease with life and how we can improve so that we become more at ease with who we are, how we look, what we have, and all of that that is in this thing called life. Brenda Williams is a board-certified professional coach and energy leadership master practitioner who helps individuals and businesses be more, do more, and have more so that they can live a life filled with more happiness and success with less stress. Please welcome to my studio, Brenda Williams. Thank you, Dr. Marissa. It's a privilege and an honor to be here. I'm very excited. Yes, I'm glad to have you too. And uh, we, you know, it's our business. This is a relatively new area, right? Um, it is different than traditional therapy. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And it does deal with, though, seems to deal with the theme around how do we uh, remedy life disease? How do we get out of um things that uh, that seem to consume us that obviously consumed Robin um, this feeling of um, not wanting life not being happy with our lives mm -hmm. uh, not liking or accepting or or seeing a value what life is exactly as it is mm -hmm. so tell me a little uh, about what you do and and what kind of people come to you and why why you're interested in this well, I'm interested in this because it changed my life. Mm -hmm. You know, many years ago, about 15 years ago, I felt like I was lacking meaning and happiness. And I went on a journey of self-discovery mm -hmm. myself when someone mm -hmm. said to me on the beach in Cancun, Brenda, what is your purpose in life? And I didn't know the answer. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was doing well. I had a great career. I was making good money, traveling the world. But something was missing. Mm. And you're so right. We get caught up in the lifestyle, especially in sunny California. Mm -hmm. You know, having more, wanting more. We got to look good. We got to make more money. We got to have the bigger house. Mm -hmm. And you can really get caught up in that. Mm -hmm. And so many people that I talk to end up finding they're not happy because yes. they work so hard. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it's one of those, you know, that book, if you grow up in the book According to Cinderella, right, mm -hmm. you think that if you follow, and the book according to our society and the magazines and the TV and the media, that what is the purpose of life? The purpose of life is to go to school, get a job, have a career, uh, meet someone, get married, have children, uh, have a nice car, have a nice house, have t money for travel, be comfortable, have a an airplane, uh, have some kind of notoriety, have some kind of fame, mm -hmm. uh, be a rock star or a movie star, and, and you'll live happily ever after right so and true. and and what a what a what an exactly um uh, proof that that does not bring you happiness and i'll take that a step further when we're in school we're not taught anything other than go to school be a good kid you know get good grades you learn math and mm -hmm. science and and uh, english mm -hmm. and all those essential skills to growing up and working and living but you don't learn life skills yeah you're not yeah. taught what emotional intelligence is and becoming self-aware and mm -hmm. finding that inner peace and that happiness within yourself yes. it is a big disconnect in the school system yes yes and and look at robin Williams. He had everything according to that uh, Cinderella, mm -hmm. right? Exactly as I described. And obviously, he was not happy. Correct. Uh, and and I have many many clients who make 
uh, upwards of two, three million dollars a year. They have all of those things and they are not happy. I know people who have nothing and are happy. I know people who have a little bit of both and who are not happy. Mm-hmm. I, so, so what is happiness? What is, uh, what is this thing called life? What does it mean to be happy? Well, I had a client come to me about a year ago, Mm -hmm. and she wasn't happy, and she didn't know why. She was kind of in the boat I was years ago, had a good career, traveling the world, making great money, had her Mercedes, but just was really lacking that happiness. And she didn't know how to find it. She Mm -hmm. didn't know why she wasn't happy. Right, right. So through this journey of self-discovery, this process that I go through, she was able to really start uncovering what in life would make her happy? Mm-hmm. And you know, sometimes that's having fun. I look at it as having life balance. When I work with people, I- You're preaching to the choir on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so, so many of us lack life balance. Right. We are either great in our career and we work so much and we give it our all, but we're not with our family, we're not taking care of our health. So many people that are successful in their career, their health and wellness starts suffering. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. you'll have the opposite where people are having so much fun, they don't have a great career. Mm-hmm. And so if it's it's not a balanced life. Yes. You're you're lacking a lot of happiness mm-hmm. and and inner purpose, inner mm-hmm. being, it, mm-hmm. connecting with your essence. Mm-hmm. So when I work with people, we work through the wheel of life. And it has it's like a pie. And I look at it as having your spirituality, your relationships, your fun, your health and wellness, your career, uh, it's having the balance. Mm-hmm. And for many, they focused in one or two areas. Right. And they have forgotten the rest. Right. So right. it's really going through a discovery journey mm-hmm. of what's missing in those areas. What yeah. would get me excited and enthusiastic about life? Yes. Yes. What what makes you laugh? Exactly. You know, what makes you feel alive? And, and you know, when I heard uh, that Robin had taken his own life and I looked at his how much of his happiness was based on, you know, making people laugh and mm. feeling like I love making people laugh. <laughs> I love I love feeling uh, laughter come on to me. It is one of my joys and pleasures of life. But what I, I can remember um, trying to define my own happiness on how I made other people feel so I felt good when others felt good so I've I validated myself by how I was making other people feel and that's a very slippery slope and my guess is that's one of the factors and there's many factors um, of 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 Robin's unhappiness mm-hmm. that I will never know because I'm not him but I'm guessing from from a fellow per- entertainer I love to entertain I that if I only base my happiness on how I can make you happy, mm-hmm. that I get myself into trouble because I'm constantly looking for the outside validation and approval. So when you're talking about that self-discovery and what makes me happy, that has nothing to do with you. I think that there's a key component, and that's one of the reasons why I like your approach, is you do balance that with, you know, I used to say, Gosh, if I could just feel half as good about myself as other people say I'm as good at. So if I could Mm -hmm. respect myself just half as much as people respect me, I'd be golden. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what I did... As you were saying, you know, you're, you're successful in the outward. You've, you've made, uh, you, you do the things that you put as a goal for yourself and you've achieved those things and you're still not happy. It's, it's that when, I'm, when can I validate myself? Mm-hmm. When can I say, you know what, you're pretty good. You're, you're, you know, you're not, and it's, and I, and I call it that, that uh, swing. Uh, People have heard me say before where I found myself similar to you Mm -hmm. uh, back in 85. I can remember in 85, I was, uh, uh, was supposed to uh, get on faculty for the uh, UCLA training laboratories. And so I had to go through the, the, the same thing myself Mm -hmm, in order to mm -hmm. be able to teach it. And I can remember my mentor, Dr. Fred Masaryk saying to me, are you happy? What makes you happy? Mm-hmm. Do you feel good about yourself? And I, I had to stop and I, and I said, I don't know. No, I don't. Because most of the time I feel when someone compliments me, mm-hmm. 
I, I have this little voice that says, you're really not all that. Right. You're really not. And no matter how much good I did or how many things I achieved, I would say, yeah, but you don't really know me. So I'm a piece of shiitake. I feel like a piece of shiitake. Mm-hmm. And then I would go to the other extreme, right? When, when uh, someone would compliment me or I would do something well or I would be recognized or I would see someone and I criticize them, I'd go, Oh, I'm pretty hot shiitake, <laughs> right? So I lived my life on that. I'm hot shiitake, and then I'm a piece of shiitake. I'm a piece of shiitake. I'm a piece of shiitake, no matter what. Right. And that is a horrible, horrible way to live. Well, I, I call that, um, I work with people on their energy blocks, and mm. there's four of them. And one of them is what I call the gremlin, the inner critic. Mm. And it's something most people aren't aware of. It's in our subconscious mind. Yeah. And it's that piece that'll say, you can't do that. Who are you mm-hmm. kidding? Why would you even go for that? You don't have enough experience. You don't have enough knowledge. Yeah. You're not pretty enough. And mm-hmm. people will listen to that voice. Yeah. I call it the liar. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes yeah. it whispers and sometimes it screams but absolutely it, it can hold people back tremendously yeah so helping people understand what is your inner critic what are you hearing what mm-hmm. are you telling yourself in your subconscious mind mm-hmm. is transformational when you start being aware of it absolutely absolutely you mentioned four blocks tell me the other three well limiting beliefs is a big one mm-hmm. and they're the beliefs we create it's based on our childhood the yeah. experiences we had the events what our mom Mom and dad told us was right or wrong, good or bad. Mm -hmm. What we learned through experiences, what our teachers taught us, Mm -hmm. what we had happen to us in school. And we start creating this belief system. Yeah. And it becomes who we are. Yeah. And we're not even aware of it. We're just on automatic pilot. Yeah. And it makes us tick. And it can hold us back. Some of those beliefs are great, mm-hmm. but some of them don't serve us. Yeah, right. And right. we will stop trying things because we don't believe it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah, I call them BS. <laughs> That's right? a good word for it. Right? Belief systems <laughs> are BS. I love that. Yeah, bullshit talking. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Great, you're singing my tune, sister. So yeah. third third block? Uh, well, assumptions that we make. Mm-hmm. We experience things in our life, and we assume that because it didn't work before, it won't work again. Mm-hmm. So people will stop trying. Right. You know, things will happen to us in the business place or even in our personal life where someone let us down or we couldn't trust. They just weren't there for us. So we won't trust that person again. Right. right. And so we'll make assumptions based on past performance, past situations, and we'll stop trying. Yeah. And that holds people back tremendously in right. so many ways. And when you start paying attention to these, yeah. it's shocking how often it shows up in your world. Right. Right. Fourth interpretations Mm -hmm. how we interpret the conversations we have with people yes you know I work with my my clients that I coach on becoming a real intuitive active listener Mm -hmm. so that you can really hear what people are saying what are you saying (laughs) sorry I couldn't resist (laughs) versus be thinking about what you think, how it should be, mm-hmm. what's right or wrong, mm-hmm. what they should do next, what's your opinion. Mm-hmm. And I hear that all the time in conversations at parties. I sit around the table now and I watch people. Yeah. Everybody has their opinion on how it should be yeah. versus learning something from the person you're talking to. Right. What's their right. experience? Where are they coming from? Yeah, everybody has a right to my opinion. <laughs> 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 My friends will attest to that one. It's a good thing I have a talk radio program, right? This is where it absolutely comes in handy. Very yeah, true. I call that same principle. Uh, I learned it from Sister B. She calls it drop out of MSU University. So MSU University is make shiitake up. And we do this all the time. Mm-hmm. If we walk by someone and they don't have a smile on their face, automatically before I uh, did a little work on my own codependency, I would think it was all about me. They're mad at me, they don't like me, I don't Mm -hmm. look good, and all of that goes with that first, that negative voice. Yes. And and then soon I am uh, in this tailspin of of negativity mm-hmm. and uh it, it actually was that person you know just ate something bad at lunch and they had a bad <laughs> exactly <laughs> had nothing to do with me
me because mm-hmm. MSU University usually brings out the narcissist too. The world, mm-hmm. you think that the world revolves around you in a very negative way. Right. Right. And it can hold you back in the business world as well. I had a client that had just started managing and leading a team of people. Mm-hmm. And one day she was walking by the lunchroom and they were all laughing and joking. And when she approached, they stopped. Yeah. And she thought they were joking about her. Right. So for months, her whole path at that company changed. She felt different. She didn't communicate the same. She didn't mm-hmm. feel like part of the team. It affected her performance. Mm-hmm. And months later, she found out they were telling an off-color joke. And they just didn't want the new boss to hear about it. Yeah. 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 That happens. MSU. Drop out of MSU University. <laughs> because I think, too, um, and, I, and I do want to spend a second to because I had a lot of people comment uh, to me uh, uh, about when the news came out about Robin Williams and um, you know certainly depression is Mm -hmm. uh, you know if we're going to put that moose on the table I don't want to minimize depression at all I also mentioned you know life coaching is different than therapy because licensed therapists are trained on diseases like clinical depression. Uh And certainly if you have been diagnosed with clinical depression, Mm -hmm. it is something that, you know, uh, I'm not a big fan of drugs and I, uh, people who know me know that because I think that we're over prescribed now. When I first went into psychology, uh, clinical depression was a 0.08% of the population. Mm. And now we're up to three out of four Americans are taking some kind of uh, prescription oh, wow. for mood alteration. That's so amazing. to me, we did not go from 0.08 to 0.75 in clinical depression. Mm-hmm. So that being said, and that moose on the table, I do want to say that there are people who absolutely need to take medication because they have a chemical imbalance. And that's where it is invaluable. Mm -hmm. But I do believe, and which is why I think it's great that we have life coaches and coaching now as as a way of giving people tools to deal with the overwhelming number of people especially in America who are waking up and saying I'm not happy Mm -hmm. I don't know why and I I I don't love my life and that's why I have this show I purposely talk about hope and happiness Mm -hmm. 88% of the time not because you know I'm asking people to be you know this walking around false sense of happiness all the time Mm -hmm. but true happiness there is a formula for true happiness there are ways to love your life that Mm -hmm. don't involve taking an artificial quick fix pill so true so I work with a doctor's office currently, and she said 80% of her patients that come in complain about stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's like I'm stressed out at work, I'm working too many hours between the kids, the house, the job, you know, the bills. I'm just overwhelmed. I'm pressured. I can't get things done. I'm unorganized. So that kind of stress can be handled by a new thinking process yes. and providing people with tools. <laughs> and I actually have a program that helps people. It provides an assessment so they can determine what is their thinking process? What are the emotions and feelings they attach with those thoughts? What are their hot buttons and their trigger points that pop up without them even realizing it? And that combined with the, uh, the um, uh, energy blocks we talked about earlier right. is a real eye opener where be- people become more self-aware. Where's the stress coming from? I create that. In right. my own thoughts. Right. And you can right. shift those thoughts. Yes. So I have a whole energy leadership process around your thinking that provides seven new choices, seven new ways hmm. that people can think. And if you're at the lower levels, it's the negative energy, the anxiety, mm-hmm. the stress, the overwhelm, the unhappiness. And these are the initial thoughts that go with it. These are the feelings. And this is how you're going to act. Right. Right. If you want to be happy and blissful, here's the other steps to get there. And it goes right on up the levels. And so they learn, okay, today I'm having a bad day. I know I can make a choice. Do I want to think these thoughts or do I want to shift and go over here? Let me try that. Let me try level two, three, and four. Let me think a different thought and Mm -hmm. see what the emotion will be that's attached to it. 
And it's a tool I use on a daily basis because even as a coach, I have challenges in life. Really? (laughs) Really? (laughs) I know. I think coaches uh, probably add even more stress to themselves. I don't know about you, but, you know, because I teach this stuff and because I help people with it, there's another little voice that says, you shouldn't feel this way or Mm -hmm. you should know better you should be able to handle that or you shouldn't and and those i should on myself (laughs) 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 those shoulda woulda couldas right and 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 i have to cut myself some slack Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's called um one of the one of the tools I use is I, I'm a re, I'm a recovering perfectionist mm-hmm. because I I don't like making mistakes and I don't like feeling bad and I don't like admitting mistakes and I don't mm-hmm. like any kind of low vibration. But the fact of the matter is I'm a human being and I'd be really irritating to most people if I was perfect. Um, I still want to be perfect Mm -hmm. and I have wonderful support systems of people around me who remind me that it's okay to not be perfect. Mm -hmm. It's okay to, you know, be human and make mistakes and have an apology. So I don't know about you. you. Are you married? I am married. Okay. Does he ever throw that in front of you? <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm married to an angel. Oh, <laughs> you're so lucky. I've got two teenagers that remind me constantly when I have screwed up my own 21-day fast from complaining. Aren't we on the fast today? You just blew it. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> well, my coach, I believe in having a coach, tells me we make choices every day in every way. And so when I get angry, I will say, you have a choice. Yeah. Do you want to be angry and miserable? Or do you want to shift your thinking and get out of this place Mm -hmm. and sometimes you have to be there for a minute like you said we are human yeah yeah and and i actually believe that we have to be there for more than a minute Mm -hmm. i have this thing called i'll be back in two and two (laughs) right remember chuck woolery and the the love connection so i believe that i cannot be fully happy unless i fully express that which i am feeling in the moment right. and then i can release it especially anger especially irritation mm-hmm. especially um i i, I allow the, myself the luxury of two minutes of resentment every month because <laughs> i just need to you know have that and have it out and right. my kids know exactly when it is with my husband mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> who's an easy target but uh most of the time i'm not mm-hmm. but it is because I, uh, I i give myself permission to vent mm-hmm. and so i i talk to two people for two minutes two times and mm-hmm. then i'm not allowed to come back to it mm-hmm. and that helps me stay in the happiness so because because negative energy takes up more volume than positive. Very true. And so if I don't release it, it builds up. I feel the same. Right. Yeah. I was coaching someone just this week who came in and she said, I'm known as the peacekeeper in my family. Mm. And she said, so I'm always keeping the peace and I'm always going along with what everybody else wants. And it's never about me. It's always about them. And she goes, and then eventually it just builds up inside. And one day I'll just blow my stack and they wonder what happened to her. Right, right, right. And so people will keep stuffing that under the carpet. And there's a lot of reasons. They're not comfortable having difficult conversations. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to set their boundaries. Yeah. the fear of being rejected and they don't stand up for themselves yes so these are some of the tools that I teach people I just released 10 videos wonderful <laughs> congratulations <laughs> thank you and they were on passion and purpose how to set boundaries how to release the disease to please how to have life balance with less stress and which one do you think was the most popular the last one how to have life balance with less stress. stress. It's yeah. a big one. It's yeah. all are these over. On, now, these are, how do we find you? Uh, Brenda Williams is sponsoring this show. So thank you for that, You're that welcome. we're able to talk about all of these great things. How do people find you and find these videos? The best bet is to go to my website. Everything's there. And it is yourcoachingsolution.com. Okay. Yourcoachingsolution.com. Easy. Uh, it's spelled Y-O-U-R-C-O-A-C-H-I-N-G. No S. Okay. Solution. No, no S. S. Okay. Dot com. Wonderful. And I also have a free 12-week program there. Ah, 
so that people can start their journey to self-discovery and self-awareness. That's great. That provides the tools, the techniques, the Mm self-assessments where they can look at themselves and discover how strong is my communication skills? Mm -hmm. What are my relationships like? You know, they get to look at what is the fear that might be standing in my way? They learn more about those energy blocks we talked about. Right. Right. Great. Great. And people can remote use you. Do they have to be in? You're in Southern California? Yes, I'm in Uh, Southern California, but I work with people all over the world on the phone. Great. Great. So so please do check out Brenda Williams and yourcoachingsolution.com. Singular, no plural. And uh, if you've just tuned in, we are talking about life dis-ease and how to have more life happiness on Take My Advice, I'm Not Using It, Get Balanced with Dr. Marissa. (laughs) And um, today is uh, a a good day and a sad day. Uh, We mentioned uh, the passing of Robin Williams, and Mm. uh, just I wanted to uh, have a, a moment of healing peace, taking that deep breath for his family. And for so many people who have expressed their gratitude and uh, their loss in someone who has brought so much happiness into Mm. other people's lives. And as I wrote on my Facebook this morning that I hope, I know you're on the other side, Robin. I know you're with my dad. And I hope that you know now or you will know uh, just how valuable you are and that actually that message goes out to anyone who is tuning in right now anyone who is listening to the sound of my voice that every single person in this thing called life is a unique and beautiful child of the universe with gifts talents and abilities to use in this lifetime I really love that expression Uh, that I learned uh, probably a decade ago, uh, that we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We're actually spiritual beings having a human experience. And I Mm. believe that there is life eternal, and it is my choice to believe that um, there's so much more than this thing called life. But there is only this thing called life in this way and that there's many many beings that want to actually enter this thing called life and I got fortunate enough you got fortunate enough to actually come here and feel that only human beings can feel with our five senses there are other beings around who don't have a body Mm -hmm. to feel all of the things and some of those things are sadness and some of those things are despair and some of those things are hopelessness Mm -hmm. but most of the things that we can feel are on that other side the joy the peace the Mm -hmm. love the inspiration the creativity the generosity the bliss the wonder that aliveness that only comes with this thing called life so if you're not feeling that way if you are feeling and i have to say i have felt that i wanted to finish this thing called life when i was going through my divorce it was very 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 painful Mm -hmm. when i was going through the abuse as a child it was very 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 Mm -hmm. painful and since Divorce happens to two out of three of us, Mm -hmm. and since childhood abuse happens to up to seven out of ten of us, Mm -hmm. then I'm speaking to the majority of human beings when I say it's just a feeling. And if you are feeling that feeling, and if you're at the point where you want to actually end this thing called life, I want you to call uh, the suicide hotline, which my... Uh, client Chris wanted me for sure to bring up on the show today. That number is 800-273-8255. There is someone on the other end. There's actually probably someone that you can call any number right now that you know loves you, that knows you and loves you exactly as you are. We don't want to believe that. And, And here's the thing. As I've done this thing called life coaching for the last uh, 10 years, what has been just unbelievable 
is knowing and, and talking, and I speak to thousands of people every year around the world, and, and through the show I'm reaching, you know, <laughs> close to, I think it's, it's almost 750,000 now in the, in the 111 That's shows that I've been in, on. So I know from talking to people that every single person I've ever met has this hole. Every, if you're breathing, mm -hmm. at one point or another, you have these feelings that it's like a dark black hole in front of you. And if you feel like you have that dark black hole in front of you, you are not alone. Whatever happens to us, even if nothing happens to us, it's a strange thing. Human feeling, mm -hmm. that despair and that black hole. And especially if you've had abuse or if you've had some kind of trauma in your life, if you've lost someone close to you, if you, any kind of trauma, people have this black hole. And we feel like that if we go there, if we address mm -hmm. what it is that is our core unhappiness, what if we do that exploration, it's scary. It is scary. We think that if we go and jump in that hole, there's no bottom and we're going to die. I know I had that feeling. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that you had that feeling 15 years ago, right? <laughs> yes. Right? I like, we don't like, want to go there. Yeah. I like to say it's looking in the mirror at the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm. Yeah. But once you take that look, yes. you can make a choice yeah. who you want to be. Yeah. You, I don't know anyone who has died from actually going in that hole and exploring. Mm -hmm. Not going in that hole and giving up, but actually going in that hole, usually with someone like a coach or your best friend or your priest or your mom or someone who loves you, someone who cares about you. Mm -hmm. And that's the one great thing about coaches. We do care about you. Yes. Right? Yes. And hold your hand and go down. And what happens is with programs like yours, with programs like mine, with approaches, and there's so many different approaches, but I think the core is to love the good, bad, and the ugly. Exactly as you said. Because mm -hmm. when you go in that hole, what we find out is it's not limitless. It's not, there's a bottom. There's a bottom, there's sides. Mm -hmm. Those belief systems, yes. those lies, okay? Mm -hmm. Those feelings yes. are not all that there is. No. And there, you, you can ahead. step outside of your box. Yes. That's what I say coaches do. Yeah. They help you view your life through different filtered glasses. Mm -hmm. They give you a different perspective, a different vantage point. Great. So they, they do that through empowering questions. Yes. To help you really reach deeper inside yeah. as to who you truly are and who mm. you want to become. Mm. <laughs> I love the words. I love the words. They, yeah. are, they are true words. Um, I also liken coaches to you're still going in the basement, you're still going in that dark hole, but now you have flashlight, <laughs> right? True. You have a flashlight, you have more than one flashlight, mm -hmm. and the more tools you have, mm -hmm. the brighter it becomes. Mm -hmm. And then the shiitake that you find that's down there, mm -hmm. you can actually begin to shovel it out. And once you shovel it out, you discover the most amazing thing, that it's manure. <laughs> and we need manure to grow. Yes. And it's really interesting. Some of the most happy people I know say, I am grateful for all the shiitake that happened to me. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. I would not be who I am. I would not know the joy that I have. I would not be able to help the people that I do had I not had the abuse, had I had True. not that difficult divorce, had I not had all of those things that were so painful that I really thought I could never heal from. Yes. I promise you, you can heal. You can heal from the worst possible things mm -hmm. that should have never happened to a child. That's so true. And it makes you stronger. And then you can help others. Mm -hmm. I've met many people that have been abused and they say they wouldn't change it for the world because yeah. they became a stronger person yeah. and they were able to help heal others Absolutely. and volunteer their time and helping others overcome those obstacles mm -hmm. so that they could grow stronger and move on with their lives. Yeah. 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 It's and how you want to use it. Yeah. How do you want to package it? Exactly. Exactly. The, um, you know, it's that in psychology, I, I should have prepared to put it on a slide, but the old woman, young woman, I use that in my talks. 
Do you remember that in Psychology 101? If you look at that picture one way, it looks like an old woman. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Yes. And you look like that. Look at the woman, you see a young woman. Mm -hmm. That's life. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. Yes. You can either see the old woman. Nothing wrong with the old women, by the way. But, but <laughs> well, you I'll can be there. See. <laughs> I'm ageless. Just had that birthday. People ask me how old you are. First, I go, you are not asking me. And two, I'm very proud of it, but I am ageless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a big one in a few weeks. Are you? Okay. <laughs> 21, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that it, we can take the same picture mm -hmm. and we can see it any way we choose to see it. Choice is the most powerful tool that we've been given as human beings. And most of us haven't picked it up. I find the people that are the most happy... Mm -hmm are the ones that are creating their life and looking inside as to who they are mm -hmm. and finding that happiness and joy from within. Mm -hmm. And it can be something so simple, yeah. from seeing a beautiful sunset to walking down the street and holding someone's hand that you love. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be that Mercedes and that big house and working and, and just giving your all to get there. Mm -hmm. It's stopping and enjoying life. Yeah. The things that we take for granted, I watched a video the other day that Oprah put out there uh, by a man, his name's called Chris. No mm -hmm. legs, no arms. Ah, yes. And that yeah. is the most inspirational video yes. in the world yes. to see how happy he is. Yes, one of my listeners wants to have him on the show, and we're working on that, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's an amazing man. He is an amazing man. He's married. He, Any time my clients start going into the victim and marinating in their own poor me juices, yes. I, my first prescription is spend two minutes marinating, yes. see how that makes you feel, and then turn on that video. Exactly. Yeah. It is truly, inspirational. truly inspirational. To yeah. watch someone like that. Yeah. And I like what you said uh, about it doesn't have to be the ex it doesn't have to be expensive to make you happy. Mm -hmm. And and not only that, I will I will. I noticed that in my own life, the the shelf life of happiness or that that tea life, mm -hmm. as we call it, you know, before it expires. When I find happiness, like if I when I take that first sip of coffee and I am there with my coffee and I am one with that sip of coffee, I get so much pleasure Mm -hmm. And I can have that every single morning. I know the formula for that. Yes. Now, I won't feel it if I'm not there in the moment. Living in the present moment. Mo thank There's you. so much to be said for that. Exactly. Because even if I buy, if I think about, now I love my car. People who know me, I love my Jaguar. And it's a 2007. And I, every time I see that car, I go, baby, I love you. Thank you so much. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I get pleasure from that car mm -hmm. okay and I can honestly say I have not seen a new car that I actually want more than the car I have mm -hmm. okay now if I was of the other mindset if I and I was I had to have a new car every three years mm -hmm. and if I didn't have a new car every three years I would say that I wasn't happy with the car that I that I was mm -hmm. and and the thing is what's interesting is I would get that new car and I would be happy for about a week. New house, yes. same thing. New outfit, same thing. Mm -hmm. New bond with so much money that doesn't appreciate anymore, happy for just about a week. A week. A week. Just about a week. The thing that I'd worked so, 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 so hard for. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it would be, you know, oh, is someone looking to see, oh, they like my car. And then I would get a tiny bit of pleasure from that, and then it would be gone. So happiness is fleeting if you do not stay in the middle of it. That's how I get my 88%. I make sure that I am reveling and juicing and in the the center and just like the Oreo, licking my <laughs> happiness <laughs> inside of it <laughs> and and the present moment is the gift right right because if i'm there i'm happy and a tool that i give my clients to use is to focus on the attitude of gratitude mm. 
what have you achieved? What do you have? What's the wonderful things that happened today? Mm. So many of my clients will come in and beat themselves up over a mistake they, they made at the office or a challenging situation mm -hmm. with a friend. And they just beat themselves up and mm -hmm. judge themselves tremendously. Yeah. And I always shift them away from that to thinking about what they have accomplished, mm -hmm. how many wonderful relationships they do have. Yes. Let's take a moment for the attitude of gratitude from the simple things like the air we breathe and the running water we have yes. and the legs and arms we have Absolutely. to walk upon. And you have beautiful eye color, beautiful <laughs> eyes. You have a beautiful <laughs> smile. <laughs> Thank yes. you. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you have a wonderful way with words and you have a wonderful way about you to make feel, people feel comfortable. Yeah. Are you receiving this? I am. Thank Good. you. Good. Take a breath. <sighs> and the reason why I did that, that that's, a, that's another way to help us use choice. So as you said, in every given moment, we choose to what we focus on. And mm -hmm. I can focus on all the things that did not go well, all the things that I have screwed up on, and I have, or choose that in this very moment, mm -hmm. I am here right now with you, and you can remember those words that I said. Because I think that is something that very successful, outwardly successful people who are dying inside. Okay, so anyone, and I've had them on my show, who are outwardly successful, mm -hmm. but inside, like Robin, mm -hmm. they were so unhappy. Okay, mm -hmm. is that if we can bake our own cake and if we can pull up into our minds all of the goodness that we are, mm -hmm. all of the, the things that we have done, as you're saying, remembering where we have done well. Mm -hmm. Because if you're an overachiever, it's very difficult to remember what's good. Because by the very nature of being an achiever, we're constantly looking to what's wrong. And driving. What needs to be fixed. Okay. What's next? What's, what's next? next? What's next? What's next? And so on a continuum, we're always at 88%. And the 88 that we've done, we don't focus on. We focus on the 12 that we still have to get to. So and true. that feeling is very unsettling. There's tension there. Mm -hmm. So, Brenda, there's so much good in you. And I hope that you stay and remember that goodness in you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's You've been, been a wonderful. delightful guest. Thank you for helping me talk about this thing called life and the dis-ease. And don't forget, if you want to work with Brenda, it's very easy. You go to www.yourcoachingsolution.com. Thanks so much for coming on. <laughs> a little bit of applause for you. <laughs> it's been wonderful. Thank you so much. It's been a privilege. Yes. Thank you. Yes. And we're up at the end of our time and uh, just a couple minutes for my balance bar announcement. Step up to my balance bar. There we go. Uh, where you get a menu of the things that I offer and uh, I, because I'm now called the Asian Oprah, I am giving stuff away. Uh, congratulations to Anastasia from Florida for winning last week's copy of Women Change the World. I do have one more copy of that that uh, I do uh, that was published by Michelle Patterson, the CEO of the California Women's Conference, and I am on page 156 there. So if you'd like a copy, please go to www.4balance.org to get your free copy. First one on there, we'll get it. Uh, today is day 12 on the 21-day fast from complaining with Dr. Marie. Marissa. So today's is my favorite quote from the Dalai Lama, who is now a follower on my tweet, by the way, thanks to this. Uh, if there's a problem and there's no solution, there's nothing to worry about. And if there's a problem and there's no solution, there's still nothing to worry about. So in its cousin is complaining, so nothing to complain about as well. So if you'd like to go 21 days in a row without fasting, you will win a copy of my motivational cards called 52 Card Pick Me Up, Stacking the Deck for Life Balance. Uh, um, get, get balance with Dr. Marissa. And last but not least, I got another award. <laughs> and uh, the drum roll is to... Uh, to 
Thank you very much. This is the first time I actually got two awards in one week. I don't know if it's because it was my birthday, but I'd like to thank both the Asian Heritage Society for the uh, Best in Entrepreneurship Award, and that you can join me at the function in November. Again, you can uh, register at Asian Heritage Society awards.com and then the second award is from the Asian Women Entrepreneurs who gave me the Business Person of the Year Lotus Award. Thank you to AWE for that. That's it for this week. Next week we are having a back to school special and you will hear from two fabulous teenagers, one being my daughter, Chloe Mae Carpenter, and her friend Renee Cogden. Out of the horse's mouth, uh, the, the only thing they know is they're not allowed to swear because of the FCC on NBC now, but uh, you are going to hear answers like, uh, why is your generation seeming to have so many more psychological problems? What is it with y'all and social media? And what do our generation do to embarrass you? So answers to questions like that, you'll have to tune in next week on Take My Advice, I'm Not Using It, Get Balanced with Dr. Marissa Pei. That's P for positive EI. Remember, it's all about balance. Peace in and peace out.